So let's get into Wednesday Night Live. The topic tonight is reality versus expectation and how we can manage that. Um, it's a bit of a topic that was probably inspired by a lot by the weekend and sort of then subsequent training rides that I've had on my own horses since coming home or, you know, um, what's today, Wednesday. So uh, on Monday and Tuesday and certainly the rides that I had on Boogie, uh, she's the one I took to the um, TKH clinic. And it really got me to thinking what we had at the course, as I said, was we tried a few new things. We had archery, we had, uh, you know, I brought a couple of ropes over and uh, my partner does ranch roping. So I borrowed a couple of ropes and we were, uh, you know, testing out throwing them at a couple of roping dummies that we had there. And it was really fun and interesting to see all the different horses, most of which, including my own, that hadn't roped before. And it can be really confronting and, and quite challenging for a horse to handle a rope uh, because you've got sort of obviously you've got someone on their back which isn't just being still anymore now they're kind of swinging their arm around like this they're also holding on to a big a great big coil of rope in one hand and then a loop on the other hand so that's kind of swinging in and out of their vision and then of course you're letting it go and uh, it's either hitting the ground or it is actually roping onto the cow and catching uh, or, or the roping dummy so uh, there's, a, there's a lot of sensory overload there for the horses there's the visual stimulus from the arms and the ropes and all that sort of thing happening and then there's the noise that the rope makes as it's swinging through the air and the noise that it makes when it when it hits the cow there's the um, you know the kinesthetic um, touch sensation when the rope kind of comes down the side of the neck and of course you've got the other coils you're riding differently because you're riding one-handed so it you know there's a lot of different stuff happening when you when you throw those things at your horses with the archery it's very similar um, you know, the bow and arrow makes a, a funny noise when you let the bow go, then it makes a kind of a, a ping noise at this end. And then when the arrow, they see the arrow shoot off them and then they see it hit the target. And uh, you're, you're riding with no hands when you're doing mounted archery. So you're really trying to keep the horse in your corridor and keep them happening um, straight in front of you. So uh, a lot of challenges there. And certainly when you're doing it in a no pressure situation, it's really cool. Fun to sort of see how far along we can get with the horses. And um, I know a lot of people were probably thinking, oh no, you know, my horse is going to freak out about this. Um, and a lot of the horses didn't really worry at all. We had no uh, major problems. Most of the horses were able to handle at least the rider carrying a rope along, which for some horses would be quite significant. And uh, certainly my little horse impressed me no end. I got to dally up on the rope and actually put a little bit of tension on the rope, uh, which was nice. I got to do the mounted archery while she was in motion, which was really cool to try. And, um, and you know, we had a couple of people trying uh, the garrotcha pole and even cowboy dressage trying to keep the horse in your corridor and actually follow a particular pattern uh, can be very different from the work that you've done in the past if it is just... Um, you know, sort of working on individual maneuvers out in a paddock, which I know that that's what I do a lot of. And I like to do a lot of stuff out on the trail as well, which the trail kind of helps you keep your horse moving. Whereas once you get into an arena and you start directing them around in a circle, it can be a little bit challenging. So what was really cool um, about the weekend was we did throw a lot of different things at the horses and, and they handled it really, really well. Uh, they handled it, um, you know, exceptionally. Most of them handled it um, exceptionally well, as in there was absolutely no reaction whatsoever, which is can be fairly unusual. I've, I've done it with a lot of different horses and groups before, and I know that a lot of horses can get really worried and challenged. And um, it was really cool to see the relationships with the horses and the humans and um, and seeing that the horses had that much trust in their people that they were sort of like, I'm not so okay with that rope, but if you're telling me that it's okay, then I'm going to go ahead and get led by you. And so it brought me to thinking about, um, you know, our expectations versus reality. And often I think when we hear expectations versus reality, we think of it in a negative we think of it in that, oh, I thought my horse was going to be fine when we went down to the beach and the reality was that my horse um, was stressing out. And that's certainly one version of it. But the other version is, I thought my horse was going to be really worried about that and he wasn't. And that, that is the positive side of that. 
So I think it's really uh, interesting for us to sort of think about things in a way where, um, you know, maybe we would consider it would be challenging for our horses. You know, I, I know a lot of people will say, oh, my horse won't walk through water, so he'd hate the beach. And then they take him to the beach and the horse is swimming around in the water because it's a different kind of water. It's not just a little stream or something for them to jump over. So um, it can be very different depending on the circumstances that are surrounding what we're doing. So I guess what I wanted to talk about was the awareness um, uh, of the two different sets, the positive and the negative, as in the surprise that our horse didn't handle something or the surprise that our horse did handle something. And the point is to, to be continually building on creating a horse that is going to be able to handle anything that we throw at it. And I guess that's the point of this Wednesday Night Live is to talk about how we can actually um, create our horses and build our horses to the point where, where they really are that partnership horse where a lot of things don't bother them. And, and I think it's important to note that it, um, it takes a, a, a lot of time and it takes a lot of investment in those quiet relationship building times uh, and it's not just about exposing our horses to all these different things because sometimes our horses, if you're constantly, you know, taking them to a competition every weekend so they get used to it, but they're going to a competition every weekend and they're stressing about the competition every weekend, then what they're learning is a, is a pattern of stressing. They're learning every time I get I go out, I get challenged, I get nervous, I get worried, and then we go home again. And so the horse actually isn't learning how to how to accept or deal with a many different situations. Whereas I've been very fortunate that with my horses, I did that with my first um, off the track thoroughbred that I got when I was 22 years old. I thought I knew what I was doing when I got an off the track thoroughbred, and I was going to retrain it. And, uh, you know, I just jumped on it and started having riding lessons and slowly but surely we started saying, okay, well, he can go to a dressage competition. And really, he stressed at every single one. And he's the horse that led me to horsemanship because I thought there's got to be a way to help this horse not establish this pattern of stress every time he goes out. And uh, once I found horsemanship, I realized that, hey, you know, these nice clinics where it is kind of um, a low stress but a big environment really helps our horses to chip away at their confidence and build confidence in going out and actually be calm about going out. So we've had two experiences over the last couple of weeks where we recently did a... Um, we recently did a boutique clinic up at Bangalore, which was a obstacles clinic. And what was really cool to see there was a couple of horses that have been coming to clinics for probably a few years now that once upon a time would have been, you know, stressed out about the obstacles, would have been worried when um, all the horses moved away from each other. We were doing it on a cross country course. And so all the horse, like one would go over there to do an obstacle and one would go over there to do an obstacle and so on and so forth. And so all the horses kind of spread out like this. And I don't know whether you've ever been in that situation before, but quite often that can be quite stressful for the horses because they're sort of like, hang on, the, the herd is separating. This isn't a comfortable situation. And, um, you know, these two horses in particular that would have normally or once upon a time, I shouldn't say normally, but would have once upon a time been quite worried about that change and that sporadic kind of atmosphere, they completely took it on board. And then when we had a massive storm roll through that was, it was like a mini tornado, the gum trees were rustling and the rain came teeming down. All the horses, again, they really coped with that situation and they didn't sort of overly stress or really try and, you know, get worried or get antsy or anything like that. We just slowly walked in the rain back to the, um, to the shelter that we had on the property and uh, we just went under the shelter and we just kind of hung out there until the rain had passed, um, even though it was quite a, you know, hurricane situation where you had sticks and leaves and wind and all that sort of stuff happening. And it was really cool to see these two horses sort of go, oh, okay, we can handle that, we can handle that, we can handle that. And that's the result of two to three years. I can't even, I really don't know how long they've been coming from, 
for um, but that's the result of two to three years of these horses coming to these clinic situations where they used to be stressed about being in a group of five and now they can be in a group of 12 or 15 or 17 and and they're fine and they used to be stressed out in a group of five where one horse was cantering around and now they can be in a group of 10 horses with 10 horses cantering around and they're not worried by that so it's it's been really fun i guess um this year especially because i've been doing this um for a few years now and i've got people that have that have been with me for a few years now it's getting really cool to see these people you know years down the track where we reminisce about wow remember how your horse was like that and now look at you you know we use the term you've arrived you know finally everything that you've been working for this beautiful partnership horse that you can go anywhere do anything with it is here and it's a result of all the effort that you've put in so it is about taking the time to build that relationship in those nice quiet calm environments and one of the cool things again about the christmas party on the weekend was the fact that you know we had uh mounted archery in one spot we had cowboy dressage in another spot we had roping in another spot and we had a garrotcha pole in another spot and i didn't even do a head count but we probably had maybe 15 horses on site maybe a few more all in the arena at once but all doing these separate activities that were making noises and did you know ropes were kind of flying and people were trying to do cowboy dressage and this and that and it was calm it was great none of the horses stressed out about the situation none of the horses got worried you know we had horses there that i can remember four years ago being there with their buddy and literally if their buddy went more than five meters away they would be a nervous wreck and out of control literally not in control where the buddy horse had to come back and kind of stick to them to give them that support and now you're looking at the you know one buddy's over there doing cowboy dressage and one buddy's over there doing archery and and we're all fine so this takes um being able to set your expectations and be confident in the reality takes that investment that investment in the relationship and continually building the trust by um you know spending that quality calm time with your horse but also exposing them to new environments and new activities so we've spoken about this a lot in the past sometimes the new activity might be um at the same location or even in your backyard or something like that maybe you'll I don't know, maybe you've got a swimming pool and friends of yours will turn up to go for a swim one day and they'll bring a huge inflatable pineapple and you'll think, oh, can I borrow that? I just want to go and, you know, work with my horse with this crazy inflatable pineapple and use that to, uh, you know, do a trust building exercise with your horse. And soon enough, you'll be able to drag anything out into that paddock and your horse will be curious about it and trust you in the relationship and, and you know, be happy to remain calm and sort of defer to you in that situation. So it is about investing um, in the relationship and continue building the trust and actually specifically doing activities that build trust. It's not just about as I said, going to a different location every weekend and saying, oh, well, my horse is still stressing out. It's about being able to manage the horse in that new situation, find that window of tolerance and help your horse be cool, calm and confident before you leave that situation. Or if that's not possible, leaving that situation, but understanding that you can't re-expose your horse or you shouldn't necessarily do the same thing again you need to find a more positive way to expose your horse to something new if they remain um you know frantic and and busy and all that sort of stuff just repeating the same thing over and over again isn't necessarily going to help your horse remain calm with that situation if that makes sense sometimes that's the case and sometimes that will work but certainly if you go trail riding every couple of days and your horse is a stress head and um and you know you you go for after a month your horse is still being a stress head on the trail then you need to change something because just continually going on the trail um certainly after multiple times of doing that you're actually teaching your horse to be a stress head on the trail instead of helping your horse remain calm so i think continually um trying to trust build with your horse 
by trying new things and certainly reading his body language when it comes to new things and promoting his cool calm confident approach that's the way to build trust in our horses um one of the things i wanted to talk about was raising the bar and being okay with stepping back if you need to so one of the things that happened on the weekend we had uh, it was really cool actually we had four graduates from start your own horse courses or cult starting courses that i have run and um, we had four of the horses on site that have previously been to colt starting courses. And that in itself was really cool, just to see four colts out in an area where, you know, like I say, there was sort of probably 15 to 20 horses in the arena all doing crazy things. And just to be able to be there and ride around in that situation was a massive achievement in itself for every single one of those colts. And what was really cool to see was each of the riders, you know, trying out different things with their horses. You know, some were trying um, to just maneuver through the cowboy dressage court. And uh, one horse in particular um, had been, he had actually been turned out for six months. He'd only come back in in the last five days or week or so and he'd only had five rides. And I turned around and here was his rider trying him with the garotcha pole. And, um... It certainly made me think twice. I sort of looked over and I went, oh, that's a colt. He's probably not done that before. But he, he took to it like a duck to water. So that was another reason for this topic coming up in my mind. You know, even I sort of looked at that situation and thought, oh, I'm not sure about that because that horse is a young colt. But because the rider had done the ground exercises with the horse and, you know, worked with the garotcha pole on the ground, he felt confident enough to step onto the horse and try the garotcha pole from on his back and expose him to it in a safe way. And it was really cool to see because, um, you know, with a garotcha pole, you've got this huge, massive pole next to the horse. And again, you're riding one-handed. You're trying to get the horse to maneuver one-handed while this pole's dragging along the ground beside him. So um, it was a really cool thing to see. And it was also a real um, sort of eye-opener in terms of, you know, raise the bar. Definitely challenge your horse, especially if you're in a nice, cool, calm environment and you're able to have the support network around you that is going to be patient that is going to support you and um, your horse when you are trying something new, that you can definitely hold the space and control the arena if you need to. Like if you want to try something and you say, hey guys, could you just stand back a little bit? I just want to try this with my horse and I'm not sure how he's going to react. If you're in amongst a group of people where you can actually do that, then you're setting your horse and yourself up for success as well. Um, it was interesting. I was talking to someone uh, over the weekend and they had said that they had gone to a club to try a come and try day of a particular discipline and uh, it was a discipline that involved obstacles and things like that and they decided that they were going to walk around all the obstacles and show the horse all the obstacles and things like that and they they spent quite a lot of time on the ground and um, you know finally people started saying oh are you ever going to ride that horse are you ever going to get on that horse and so the pr peer pressure started to happen and you need to either be uh, strong enough in that situation to say I'll get on him when when I'm ready which is what this person did because there every situation is unique and you don't ever know what the rider or the horse is going through I know that this particular rider and horse combination um, was a young colt that had not had that many rides on it um, in its total in its life but had also um, been turned out so it's about being able to hold your space and say, you know what, I, I'm good here. I'm not going to allow that peer pressure to um, affect me or what I'm doing with my horse. It's not going to make me fast forward this process. Um, or you need to put yourself in a situation where you know that people, you know, we had three or four people on the ground for a considerable amount of time and not one person said to another, are you going to ride that horse? When are you going to get on that horse? When is he going to be ready to ride 
you know, we, we might say, oh, how's he going or something like that. But there's absolutely no pressure about getting on. And it wouldn't worry me if someone stayed on the ground for the whole weekend. Because it's about doing and understanding where your horse is at and what you need to do. And everybody's journey is different. It's not about saying, oh, well, that person's at this level. So I, that's where I should be because my horse is the same age or my horse is you know, done this many clinics or whatever, whatever. It's not about that. It's being able to say, you know what, my horse is experiencing challenges and this is the way that I'm going to approach it. So don't be afraid to raise the bar, um, you know, challenge your horse with some new things. But also, you know, if anyone over the weekend had picked up a rope or pitch up, picked up the garotcha or picked up an archery bow and the horse had got worried about it, there would have been absolutely no problem with that person putting that rope down and saying, you know what, he's not ready for that this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and um, have that in the back of my mind for something to work on, but maybe I need to work on something else in order to prepare my horse for, for working the rope. It's not about picking up a rope and saying, okay, now I've picked it up, I need to make sure that you're going to be okay with the rope. That's not what it's about at all. Um Putting the relationship first, and I guess that's what I was just talking about. Um, don't let external pressures convince you to do something up that you're you're not comfortable with, that you know that your horse isn't comfortable with, that you know that your horse isn't ready for. Um, it's about being able to say out on a trail ride, "Hey guys, I'm going to get off and leave my horse for a while. I, you know, he's uncomfortable or I'm uncomfortable, and that's okay." It's about putting that relationship first and understanding. You know, if I pick up a rope and I feel embarrassed when my horse gets worried about the rope and then I decide to force my horse to accept the rope, I'm, I'm taking away from the relationship instead of saying, I realize that my horse isn't ready. I'm going to go ahead and try this at a, at a later date when my horse is ready to experience this. So if we always have that relationship first in our mind, then um, it's certainly going to, the dividends or the investment is that in that is going to pay off. And I'm seeing it. Um, with all of our with all of our people over the years that have been you know following this process for quite some time, we're seeing them reap the rewards now, and it has been a long uh, a long process. Uh, but the relationships speak for themselves; they're just absolutely incredible. Uh, doing things before they need to be done. So one of the things about doing things before they need to be done is something, for example, uh, like bandaging a leg or um, asking your horse or teaching your horse how to hobble, for example. You know, I like to teach my horses how to hobble because then if they get their legs kind of stuck in something, they stop immediately. Only today I was leading Cooper up through the paddock. Um, I'd got, I was riding down the paddock on Boogie and I wanted to bring Cooper up to the house yards. And so I caught him and I was leading him off Boogie and all of a sudden my arm stretches back and he... You know, I almost come off the back of the horse, but luckily I was holding my rope correctly and I was able to drop one loop and give myself enough length and time just to pull up Boogie and figure out what was wrong with him. And what happened was he, he had run into a, um, it, you know, his legs had got kind of tangled in uh, like a couple of sticks or something like that. So immediately Cooper was like, oh, my legs are stuck and he stopped dead. And as soon as I sort of stopped and backed up and just maneuvered him around the stick again, he, he, he came, he was good to go. So I like to prepare my horses for those situations. Um, it's like teaching my horse to tie up and be patient. I'm certainly not someone who um, does patience poles. I don't just tie a horse up for hours and hours on end for no reason. But would I be able to tie my horse up for hours and hours on end if there was a safety situation? I'm sure a lot of us have seen... Um, the absolute terrible fires um, in the United States. And we've probably all seen that, those videos and, and pictures of horses, you know, tied up along the beach um, in Malibu there and in other locations tied up to fences and things like that because that's the only place that they can stay safe in the front of a fire. So I don't want to be tying my horse up like that for hours on end if he's never been taught to tie up and be patient. So it is about understanding that, our horses do need to be prepared for situations. You know, we recently had a horse that was injured and he was an absolute gentleman. He, he behaved wonderfully for the vet, even though she was uh, kind of squirting stuff into his leg that would have been stinging and things like that. Uh, and I'm a firm believer it's because of all the trust building that um, the owner's done with that horse. 
uh, that for him to understand, well, I'm really uncomfortable with this, but I trust you. And also, you know, all the activities that we've done, picking up the horse's feet and wrapping um, ropes around them and all that sort of stuff. So investing in those um, little big things helps us prepare our horses for when we actually need to do it um, in the case of an emergency or, or when, you know, something goes not quite right. Uh, building our own knowledge and our own toolbox. So, you know, this is about continually expanding our mind in terms of our knowledge, continually expanding uh, our philosophy, continually maybe reviewing our philosophy, continually having uh, an inner reflection on how we're relating to our horses, how we're... Um, you know, what spikes us emotionally when it comes to our horses, what gets us frustrated, what gets us angry, what scares us. If we know these kind of things, then we're able to address these things in order to build that consistency between us and our horse. The more I improve myself, the more improvement I'm going to get out of my horse. And that's my own knowledge, my own skills, my own techniques, all those kinds of things. I need to be continually evolving in my processes and how I'm relating to my horse, what I'm asking him to do, my knowledge about what it is that I'm looking for, all that sort of stuff is, is a continual journey. It's a continual growth. Um, in closing, what I wanted to sort of put out there for you guys, especially at this time of year, um, you know, it's getting towards the end of 2018. I'm sure we're all starting to... Um, you know, not necessarily wind down. I know this can be a really busy time of year for a lot of people. Um, but I also know that it, it, you know, this kind of settling starts to come as we head in towards the end of the year. And definitely there can be a little bit of a lull um, in between Christmas and New Year. And um, really, I think just having a moment to reflect and think about what do I, what scares me? Uh, what would what do I anticipate would scare my horse and maybe setting some kind of goals around those things now if if I said to you what scares you and you said riding bareback I don't mean go and get on your horse bareback tomorrow okay I, I don't mean that at all I mean that there's going to be a process towards it if I said to you what scares your horse or what what situation do you think your horse wouldn't be good in? Maybe you'd say to me, a big group trail ride, a the beach, I'm pretty sure the waves would scare my horse, or being out on the trail scares my horse, or, uh, you know, uh, picking up things scares my horse. I know these things. If you can kind of start to think about those little, well, they're not always little, those things that scare you and your horse, then you can start to set goals around working towards overcoming those fears and maybe building some confidence and trust in those areas. So bringing it back to our topic of the evening, expectations versus reality, what we're talking about is our, our expectation in regards to, I know that my horse is going to be worried about this or I know that my horse is scared of cows or whatever and actually working towards um, making that, a confident area in you and your horse and also what are the things that you think that your horse would be really good at what you know if I say to you oh the beach but it's probably not the things that you know your horse is good at you know it's not about saying well I go to the beach every weekend I know my horse is great it's about you saying oh yeah I'm pretty sure he'd be fine on the trail maybe it's time to to test that theory you know if there's if you've got expectations there where you think your horse would be really good at you know, roping or being around cows or he'd love cows or he'd love to go on the trail, then, you know, take the time to set that up for a day and see if if that comes to fruition or see if there's some challenges there that, that um, open up and, and gives you some more things to work on. Of course, I'm talking about in a safe environment. Again, if you don't know, it's not about just ripping the band-aid off tomorrow and saying, right, I'm heading down the beach on my own and I'm going to see how my horse does it. But it's just those little things about, you know, how do I, how do I feel about a situation? How do I 
Am I thinking that my horse would react to a situation and building that as our reality? Our expectations are one thing in terms of, you know, I did expect that my horse would be pretty good over the weekend with regards to those things. I didn't expect that she would be so good. She didn't blink an eye at anything. Even when I dallied up and really asked her to back and hold the rope, she didn't react to the pressure on the saddle or, or anything like that. So she absolutely exceeded my expectations in that regard. Um, and then when I came home and tried to, um, you know, do some work here in the arena, I actually asked her to do a couple of things that she was not prepared for. So she under she she didn't even meet my expectations in regards to our arena work in a in a particular specific element of her arena work. So it's about you know I know my horses and I think I know my horses pretty well, uh, but she surprised me in in two different areas this week, and um, and you know that's all part of building the relationship and sort of going oh okay. You know that's how we that's how we learn and that's how we grow and instead of getting frustrated about it it's about saying well you know that's the area that i need to work on and i immediately uh with the arena work which i could see um she was in a great amount of um you know stress and and uh and she wasn't happy with the situation at all i knew that i could help her by taking her out on the trail and really letting her sort of move forward and just get re-comfortable again and that's exactly what I did and by the time we got home from our trial she was she was lovely again and she was certainly coping more with what I was asking her to do than when I was just asking her to do it in the arena so expectations versus reality and how we manage situations it's about all that pre-investment that I've just been talking about but it's also about not being afraid to you know change the situation you know I was riding in the arena, I had all my stuff in the arena, I was prepared to do the lesson in the arena, I, you know, I had other horses to work and all that sort of stuff, and then I just went, you know, this isn't working, I'm not afraid to change it, let's go and do this over here, and this is what I think is going to help my horse, and it turned out to be the right decision. So don't be afraid to adjust and change when something isn't working for you, it's not about sticking to the same thing. And, um, and just repeating something over and over. I know that we're not always fortunate. You know, I'm very fortunate here that, um, you know, I was working in my arena at home and I've got trails that start probably a couple of kilometers down the road. Uh, and it is quite a busy road, but I know that Boogie can, uh, you know, she can handle that road with her eyes closed. We have a lot of logging trucks and things like that. I know she's perfectly fine with logging trucks. And so I'm very fortunate that I could take her immediately out on the trail and really help her work through the situation. I know that we're not always all so fortunate to be able to go straight out on a trail with different horses and things like that. Uh, but if you find yourself you know, working on something for 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes and you're just keep asking the same thing of the horse and keep pressuring it. You can see the horse is getting sweaty. You can see he's getting fatigued. You can see him, him getting worried. You need to change it, okay? The more fatigued that your horse is getting, the less that he's going to be able to, able to focus on what it is that you're actually asking him to do. So uh, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. And uh, certainly don't be afraid. Adjustability is the key to helping your horse through situations. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on our first Wednesday night live back. I'm probably a little rusty behind the camera or in front of the camera. And uh, thank you so much for watching and joining me. I really appreciate it. I saw that a few people were making comments. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the comments and I will address them all. I just can't see them from here. So I can't, um, I can't comment in the live feed. Thank you again. Please send through any topics that you'd like to see me cover. I love getting topics. I love getting contact. Um, you know, I don't have to mention names of the people who sent it to me. That's not a problem. I, I, I really enjoy people sending in topics because then I know that I'm covering topics that you want to hear about. So please be involved and uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And uh, I will see you all next Wednesday for Wednesday Night Live at 8 p.m. Thank you. Good night.